Minister Christian Freeland is uh, here is next to me. Nice to see you, Minister. Thank time. you for nice making the time. Nice to see you, I appreciate it. Um, I wanted to start off and just ask you, actually, based on the criticism I heard initially from the Bloc and the NDP, there is not much in here beyond what you telegraphed or what your government had telegraphed earlier, particularly where housing is concerned and measures to address affordability. The chief criticism I've heard so far is that it won't help in the immediacy. It will help more in the middle, midterm to long term, and therefore won't kind of measure up against the acute nature of the crisis as it exists right now. How would you respond to that? Well, I disagree, Bashi. Um, this is a narrowly focused update, and it's an update. It's not a mini budget. But it is focused on the things that Canadians need most right now. And what Canadians need most is housing. And that's why there are some really significant measures on housing. There is $15 billion for the Rental Construction Financing Initiative. That will build 30,000 new homes. There is a billion dollars for deep affordability. There is support, something close to my heart, support for co-ops. There's a really important new measure, cracking down on Airbnbs. That's going to make 30,000 new homes available for people to rent permanently. And I think the important thing to emphasize is on housing, this is about something that we've been working on since we formed government. We have been working on urgently this fall. We lifted the GST on purpose-built okay, rental, a, a, a huge measure in and of itself. We added $20 billion to the Canada Mortgage Bond Program. That provides financing that's going to lead to 30,000 homes built every year, year after year after year. So there are a lot of measures that are happening today, and we're just going to keep on building. I'm going to push back respectfully on the idea that those measures collectively are uh, really significant because I'm even listening to the numbers that you're that you're putting out there about what each individual measure will generate 30,000 homes, tens of thousands maybe at the end of the day as the housing minister said in an interview last week with us hundreds of thousands of homes the CMHC says there needs to be 3.5 million new units constructed above and beyond what's already planned by 2030 in order to restore affordability what you're proposing doesn't even come close so again the criticism that you're hearing from the opposition is this won't help me with the problem now Again, I just disagree. Each one of these measures, and I listed four serious measures that are in the fall economic update right now, and they, they come on top 000. of more than that, because these are year after year after year. And they come on top of significant measures that we announced this fall. And we're just going to keep on going. So, you know, I and I really am seeing these measures in action. I was in Toronto on Tuesday at an announcement where, you know, right behind me, apartments were being built. And that was about uh, 2,600 rental apartments in the Toronto area. That was not with the money I was announcing today. That was this program, the Rental Construction Financing Initiative, that was already in the fiscal track. So there is a lot of building going on in Canada. We know that's necessary, and we're going to keep on investing. And I also want to point out, it is about building new homes. It's also about things like our measure on Airbnb. It is also about things like Brian, the first home go savings go account. 250,000, more than 250,000 Canadians have opened a first home savings account. So, you know, to me, what that shows is Canadians, many Canadians want to buy a home. They believe in it and they're glad that there is a way for them to save up for that home. Sure, those 250,000 for sure, but there are hundreds of thousands of other Canadians who are constantly reaching out to us saying, we have a job, we have two incomes, and we still cannot afford a home. And I, I'm going to again push back because I know you're saying you disagree with the assessment that what you're doing won't meet the moment in how acute the crisis is. But again, 30000 for Airbnb, 30000 for the other measure you announced. I know you're doing something. I'm not trying to intimate that you aren't. But it does not even come close to so, so 3.5 million. Uh, will it ever? Again, I, I just respect. Again, like, thank you for your question. Really important question. Really important issue. 
And I think the point is we have been investing in housing since we formed government. We have been taking urgent action this fall with really needy measures. The lifting the GST on purpose-built rental alone is a game changer. But you promised that we almost seven years ago. And, 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 and now it is in place and it is making a real difference. The other what measure, the other measure that when you first promised it, though, and, and did your inability, your government's inability to see the crisis as it was developing lead to less effective impacts on what you're doing? I, I just disagree. I think the reality is Canada is a growing country. We are so lucky in the G7 that we actually have a growing population. That is a huge economic advantage. And what that means is we have to build, build, build. There's going to be no magic bullet on housing. This is going to be something that we have to invest in day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. That's what we've been doing with new measures like the Airbnb measure and adding more money into measures that are already working like rental construction. But I just want to talk about one other thing that I think will be important to your viewers. And that is the Canadian mortgage charter. Because you've said that you're hearing from people concerned about housing. I'm sure you are, I am too. I'm also hearing from people concerned about renewing their mortgages. And I think right now, with interest rates having gone up uh, very swiftly, there are a lot of Canadians out there who are legitimately worried about affording their mortgage when they need to renew. And that's why for the first time we published in this fall economic statement the Canadian Mortgage Charter. I hope it will provide some real relief to Canadians and will let people know. So I would just like to yeah, say to no, your I viewers, that. like, please Take a look, Our, Google it. No, my colleague Amanda will, Lane was highlighting that as one of the big takeaways. I, I, from this. I think it's, and I think it's going to provide. Like I talk to my constituents, and a lot of people. And I was talking to other MPs today, and they said, "What do I say to my constituents who are worried?" And now there's something you can say, which is, "Look at the Canadian Mortgage Charter. It tells you what you have the right to expect from your bank. Things like a longer amortization period. Things like if you have a, if you have an insured." mortgage, you can switch to a different mortgage provider without having to requalify. So this is real support for Canadians who are feeling stretched right now. Certainly we will put that information up on the website. I know it's an important takeaway and I don't want to take away from that. But the first part of my question, uh, you said you disagree with, but you didn't, you didn't really answer it. And that is, for example, when you, when you talk about removing the GST, that is something that your own party in a couple elections ago recognized as necessary to address the issues with housing at the time, but you didn't pursue it. Why were your why was your government, why did it take until this fall to act with the urgency that you now characterize your, your actions as? Again, what I would say on housing, and I think Canadians understand this, is there is no silver bullet. There is no one measure that is going to respond to the housing needs of Canadians. And Meeting the housing challenge is going to be something that we're going to have to do every day, every week, every month going forward because we're really lucky. We're a growing country. So if we yeah, keep on, if we, but, but if, a couple if we months keep ago, on, the Prime Minister was saying it's not our primary responsibility. What we believe and what we have been demonstrating is that housing is something we all have to work on together. It's got to be cities, it's got to be provinces, it's got to be the federal government. It has to be private builders and not-for-profits. It has to be about rental and it has to be about helping people buy their own home. It has to be doing things like cracking down on Airbnb so homes that exist, people can live in permanently. It has to be things like providing a savings vehicle, like the first home savings account, so people can buy their own home. It has to be about supporting co-ops, a great affordable way to have a home and build a community. So there's like tons of things we have to do. And I'm not trying to take away from the complexity of it, but I'm also putting myself in the shoes of Canadians. Like so many people, You're you and I both know, but I, I'm lucky enough to, got, to have bought a house before it was really expensive. And so I can afford it now, but there are a lot of people who can't. And I'm, I'm just thinking of them watching Watching tonight and thinking, will my will it will will I have a better ability in the near future to be able to afford a home? 
And really because of the delay in which, with which your government introduced all this stuff, which may end up working really well, it won't for a few more years. And, and there I just disagree because part of what is happening... So you think tomorrow somebody else, somebody or the next few months will have an easier ability to afford it? Part of what is happening right now is programs that we announced in earlier years are landing and are making a difference. And the best example is the National Housing Accelerator Program. This is a great program. We announced it in the 2022 budget. It's complicated because it's about working with municipalities collaboratively and finding ways to create an incentive for them to cut the red tape. That's one of our huge problems, right? Is that we have so much red tape standing the way of private capital being poured into the housing market. And that program, we announced in the 22 budget, we launched it this spring, and right. it is landing right now in specific communities. And we're covering it. I know your, your staff want you to go. So permit me just one more question about the debt servicing costs, because that's going to generate a lot of headlines. It increases in, in this document to, to $60 billion. And I think we were just talking about in the last segment. If I had to spend a lot of money of my disposable income just paying off my credit card, it's a lot less for other important programs that, that your government wants to pursue. Are you going to do anything to mitigate that number in the interim? Uh, well, I think we are, Vashi. I mean, the first question you asked me was, and kind of continue to ask me appropriately, was, are you doing enough? Are you doing enough? Are you investing enough? And then your second question is, are you doing too much? Are you spending too much? Well, so that's actually to that, two separate issues. I'm asking but, an no, issue but, of affordability no, but, versus other no, things but, you're spending, but like but a 30% increase in the size of public services. But, there, but th those issues are connected, right? Um, the, the Our investments are what makes you know, are, we have a fiscally responsible plan and we have a fiscally okay. responsible uh, plan lost, uh, like, in know, order to be able to invest in Canadians but we know we need to invest uh, in Canadians and so, so you're there is with that level of debt to cost. I'll tell you what I'm comfortable with I am comfortable uh, so with the fact just, uh, that Canada uh, has the lowest debt and the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7, and we have a AAA credit rating. But what I would say is, you know, your two questions are really connected. And that's the balance we need to find. On the one hand, we do need to make necessary investments in Canadians. And I do not agree with people who say what you need to do is cut, 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 because I agree with the tenor of your first line of questioning. Canadians have urgent needs. We need to be there to meet them, and we're doing it. And we have an economic plan that is meeting the needs of Canadians right now and is investing in jobs for today and tomorrow. And I really want to reassure Canadians that that plan is fiscally responsible. And they don't need to trust me. They, need, they can trust the ratings agencies, and they can trust the fact that we have the lowest debt, the lowest deficit in the G7. Those are important. We're finding that balance. Okay, Minister, I have more questions, but I'm going to get in trouble. So I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Krista Freeland is the Minister of Finance and the Deputy Prime Minister.